M0 FXB, welcome to my channel. We're just going to have a go at loading our Raspberry Pi 3B, which is in the camera shot, with our MMDVM hat that we've got. These are about £20 on eBay, and I've noticed that Amazon sell a few. We've got an adapter here, so you're going to need an SD card, which we've got. So first thing we're going to do is get the SD card and put it into our computer. And, we'll, it, and I'm sure the first thing the computer will say is ask us to format it. So let's do that. You plug it into our PC. Right, so let's have a look, see if we can find that first. So we'll just go to our file section, which is a little file here at the bottom. Go to boot. And there it is, um, already loaded. So we want to uh, start from scratch. So we're going to delete that. Uh, well, actually, we're going to format it. So let's let's pretend we've got a brand new SD card, and, and it comes blank. Okay. Now, if you have got an SD card that's preloaded, then fast forward to the bit where we've added the image, the disk image, and we're just adding our WPA file, which will be about, you know, I'll put a, a note in the description to say how far in that is. Okay, so we've got a blank SD card in the computer. Next thing we need to do is get our image on there. So what is a disk image? Disk image is what the Raspberry Pi will use to boot up and run the whole Pi Star system. So imagine it's like a hard drive on your computer. So anyway. Go, go to the pistar.uk, all links will be in the description. Go to download, click download Pistar, and I always use the one from the bottom here. It's for uh, the, uh, basically a, a jumbo hotspot MMDVM board with an OLED screen. So click that one there, that's Pistar RPI version 4 1.408. Uh, and then let that run take a minute now the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need to create your uh, WPA file which sounds confusing but it's basically your Wi-Fi username and password so how do we do that we go to a bit further up PyStar tools click that Select Wi-Fi Builder, and in here, we put in our username and password. So I'll just do an example one for now, so you can see it, what it looks like. And you see that one there? That's the way a little folder has appeared here. So I'll leave that there, because we're going to send that into our SD card once we've loaded the image. Now, to load the image, we, we need a, a program. There's a couple of programs, but the one I use is called Bellina Etcher, which basically selects the file we've downloaded in our zip file there and sends it to our SD card. <coughs> so it's called flashing, basically. So, when, when you run an open Bellina Etcher, it will look like this. It's a free program, so I'll show you what it looks like. It will look like, just boot mine up. It's going to be here somewhere. Trying to find it. Right, there it goes. So that's what it looks like. Okay, it's on the screen. Right, so that's what it looks like. I keep losing it. <laughs> Too many things running here. So it says flash from file. If you look at your zip file that you've got from PyStar, just click it and extract it. Now the file we need is the middle one here. It's a disk image. That's what it's called, disk image. Extract that to a folder that you have named, I would say, name it PyStar. It doesn't matter where the folder is. Do it on your desktop, it's fine. 
But as long as you've extracted it somewhere. So I'll click OK here, and it's probably going to say it's already got one, so I can ignore that for now because we've already done it. Right, so you know you've got the, file, the disk image that you need. So back to the, the Bellina part. So then you go flash from file and find where you saved and it, might, it looks like this look. So PyStar, RPI, and that's an image. You can tell it's an image. It's got a picture of a disk in the middle. Select that, select open, and then it's automatically selected my e, my e drive, um, which, is where, which is what has been designated for my SD card. Click flash, and then you've now got to wait for that to run all the way through and, and, until it gets to the end. Yeah, you get this uh, message, window, command, process. Just click yes, and it's now starting, and it will do it. So when it completes, we, we will be just adding our Wi-Fi details <coughs> into, into the same SD card. So let's pause for a minute, and we'll come back when this is completed. Right, we're getting near the uh, completion part, validating at the end. It does need to say successful at the end of this, otherwise you've got a bad SD card. Maybe you just need to format the SD card again. There you are. So that has said flash complete. So that's good. Happy with that. Now we need to get our WPA supplicant file on the same SD card. So close, just X out of that. Then go to, now you might have to, I, I've done this before, you might have to, I might have to unplug the adapter and plug it back into the computer. So let's have a look. Go, select the arrow, click show in folder, and then go to it and then right click to try and send it to it will be on mine, E, so E isn't showing. So what I do is I unplug it, my USB adapter, and just plug it straight back in. So yeah, it showed up now. So go down to E, click it. Hope I didn't see anything happen, but hopefully that sent it. So what we'll do to check, we'll go to my boot E drive here on the left. And we'll scroll to the bottom, and we, it will be at the bottom if it's worked. So there it is there. It's at the bottom. Sometimes that does tend to vanish when you unplug the thing. Right. So let's get back to um, putting the... I think we've got the SD card ready now. Now we just need to get it into the... Yeah, we need to get it into the Raspberry Pi 3B. I'll just make, a bigger, make it a bit bigger so you can see it clearer. Right, so get the SD card out. See if I can plug this in so you can see it on camera. So it just slips in there. All right, so it goes this way round. So that's in there now. And then now we need to just plug in this section into here. So you need to make sure the pins line up. I need to get my glasses out because it all gets a bit blurred. And I've just plugged that in. So you look there, it's all lined up. Could be a bit brighter, couldn't it? Let's see if I can get a light on it a bit. See that? Okay. So, we've got the hat, the MMDVM hat on. We've got the SD card in. Next thing, let's get some power into it. And then we'll show you how we're going to try and find it. So, we just turn it here. We've got a micro USB, I'm just going to plug it into this one here, you can see it flashing away, plugged in, now we'll put it, what's the best way around to put it, I think to see it best, 
I'm working, it'll be that way round. Okay, it's flashing away, and now we've got to try and find it. So the, the best way is actually to put in the Pi Star local address. So let's try it. Uh, the good thing about Raspberry Pi 3Bs is they boot up and start up very quickly. So the Pi Star address is http two dots slash slash put in pi lowercase flat line in the middle star dot and then local again lowercase and a flat slash like that now mine's lit up blue here so let's click it and if we're lucky it'll go straight to what we call um, like the mode page modem setup page so that is going to be telling the Raspberry Pi 3B what modem it's got. So let's click it. And if we're lucky, it will find it. Now, it doesn't matter if we don't, because we can just double check some of the settings. Okay, so when it, when it comes up with the Pi Star Local, it will say this, no mode defined. Click configuration, which is basically here, configuration. It might just switch to it automatically. So first thing you do is get your get your call sign in there. So let's do it one step at a time. M0 FXB. Might as well do it all caps. Make sure the zero is there a zero, not a naught. And we're going to set this one to 431.550. Now we've got the DMR radio in the background, which has got the co-plug set for four, for the same frequency. 431550, we're not gonna do our location now. It's a simplex mode here, look, MMDVM host. Leave that as it is. So at the moment, everything looks good to go. Pi star, just so we can find it, we can change the word Pi star to, we'll call it DMR, because I'm using a, I'm gonna test it with a DMR radio. Apply changes now. It's quite quick with a with a um, Raspberry Pi 3B. That's why I like using them. But they're, they're, the problem with the Raspberry Pi 3B is you can't. It's not as good to put in your pocket. Where a jumbo spot is nice and neat, isn't it? And you can tether these to your mobile hotspot on your phone. And the simplest way to do that is just to set the password on your, uh, for the hotspot on your phone the same as your home. And it will just switch autom automatically. You might have to reboot. <coughs> but, you know, a little battery pack in, in your pocket and away you go. Right, just letting that update its settings. Normally quicker than that. When it does, you get like a message on the screen. Unfortunately, we've got to update it a couple of times. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry about my cough. Right. Right, it's done. So click OK. And then now this is the part where you sort of select what you want it to do. So we want it to do DMR. So you can, you've got DMR, D-Star, and Fusion at the first three here. But just slide over DMR because that's all we want to do. You could do two, and it would queue up sending the info to each radio, but not at the same time. So you can't hear, say, DMR and Fusion simultaneously, so which is a bit annoying, but you can't. So DMR, and then we have the most important thing now is is go down, scroll down. The heading is general configuration here, and then on the left it's radio modem. So that's super important. Go over. They've got a drop down arrow here. Click it. Straight away, you're like, oh my God, all these things to choose one. But if you look about three quarters of the way down when you first click, it's here. STM, DVM, MMDVM, HS, Raspberry Pi Hat, GPO. Select that one. Don't think there's nothing else. Let's have a look. Oh no, and we can also select the screen we've got. Now, if you've got a Nextian screen here, so go up to the top, go MMDVM host at the top here, scroll down a bit. And then on the bottom, it says MMDVM display, because you sort of have to tell the Raspberry Pi to use the screen. So click 
here and I just collect OLED type 3. Now if you've got a Nexium screen, which you could just plug into the USB on a Raspberry Pi 3B, uh, you select Nextian. I don't touch the other two settings um, unless if you select Nextian, yeah, you would select USB in this section, which I can't see. Maybe it comes up when you select Nextian, but f for now, we just leave it at DevT AMO and we'll select OLED screen. I won't change the G4KLX thing. Click Apply Changes. Now, what should happen now? So you might even hear my radio come to life. It depends if it connects straight away. But we should see the OLED screen come to life. Okay, we're just waiting on that. I've got the camera, the, it's an Anytone 878 in view. I've got it on single mode at the moment. I'm hoping that the co-plug I did um, will be on the right frequency. Now, what I could do is I'll, when it fires up, I'll just quickly turn on my Anytone co-plug, just so you can see the, the setting I've put in for that channel. Because we're on DMR, we might as well let you know what to put into your radio to connect it to this hotspot. So anyway, at the moment, it said OK. So we're all connected now. Sometimes you might have to do this a couple of... Now, if you look here, see, it hasn't straight away done that so I'm gonna to have to do it again and it's like that sometimes you've got to do it a couple of times before it takes so I'll, I'll, I'll do that and then I'll come back when it put when it um when it takes my I'll pause it for now right so we've it's come back on now and this time we are showing DMR we are showing that we have the radio modem on on this general configuration section so that's looking good now we now need to select our DMR master. So that's like the server that's going to provide us with DMR contact. So it's defaulted at BM United Kingdom 2341. So that's the one I use anyway. Now hotspot security, this is needed. So what you need to do is go to self-care, which is brandmeister, put in brandmeister.network. You'll come to this page and then you need to create an account. I'm logged in already. Create an account and then in settings or go to this section here that's called hotspot security. So you'll find it under self-care here on the left tab, self-care. And turn that on and put in the password that you're going to use. You know, do one that you're going to remember. Um, so get that in there and then go back to the setup page here and put in here the, um, the same password otherwise no one's going to hear you and now we need to apply that again once that comes in then we sh should be able to select a talk group so what I'll do, whilst that's setting, I'm going to quickly show you, if I can find it, my um, Anytone 878. Let's see if I can find it here. I think that's the one code plug. So I'll just fire it up whilst we're waiting for the... Now if you look at the hotspot on the Pi 3, the OLED screen is starting to show information. Now at the moment it says close because that's what it shows when it's rebooting. Well, when it comes on, you'll probably see the word DMR come up. So anyway, here we are on the front here. Here's my hotspot. Now let's find the zone. The zone that I created for this hotspot. Let me think now. I think it's at the bottom here. I think I called it uh, hotspot 2, which is, chat, which is number 37. So let's go to channel. Let's go to, I think we go to 37. Sorry about this, I'm just reminding myself now. No, it's not there. So go to the, the channel isn't 37, that, that's the group 37. So let's go, so there's that many groups in here. A group and a zone are the same things down here. Now here it is here, right. So this is the one I've created for my, for this video. So if I go to channel, then double click the channel then you'll see in here the settings that I've put in. So I've called it Pi Star Talk Group 9, and I've done that so I can 
actually program the talk group number using the radio, and I'll do that now. There's the frequencies, 431550. We've selected talk group 9 local, uh, which you'll find that you pick out of a list. When you click this, you get a list, and you pick it out of that. You can add it, but that's for another video. And we've got color code 1 and slot 2. Okay, and then what's happened is that that channel has been placed into a zone that I have called um, Hotspot 2. There you are. So when, we turning it, when we're turning the channels in our radio, that's what I look for. So, okay, let's just click that out a minute. So it's just rebooting now. Now if we go to dashboard, if I key the mic now, you should see some activity on the hotspot and you'll see what we call local activity, which is me keying up my microphone. So because uh, the, the, the co-plug is set to talk group nine, that's what should come up. So we'll key it. Right, if it doesn't come up, it means I just need to select the correct channel on the radio. Just one sec. Yeah, I realize I forgot to put in my DMR number. So you go back to configuration. And this is a good mistake to make because it means I can show you how important that is. So nothing worked. So see here, go to the top and scroll down to general configuration. And in this section here, can put in your DMR number. Now, if you haven't got a DMR number, you need to apply for that. Seven. Oh, seven. I've done a video on how to do that. So... Right, so we've got the DMR number. Let's apply changes. Now, with a bit of luck this time, we're going to see some life on the radio. Just if you're not familiar with a DMR radio, it's you definitely need to program it, really, using a co-plug. You can do it manually. There are videos showing that. Um, but... Um, you know, there's so many things you've got to put in. A co-plug is probably going to be more sensible. But, I, yeah, it's, there is a learning curve. So you have the zones, and within those zones are your channels. Zones means groups. Because it's a digital channel, you have, instead of having, say, CTCSS, you have color codes, which is the same as a CTCSS. And the color code ne tends to be color code 1, to be honest. Uh, I've known 3 on some repeaters. And then you have slots. Now, slots means the channel has been cut in half. So you have slot one, slot two. So you imagine a channel is 25K. Well, if you cut it in half, it would be 12.5K. Um, and then you, that way you get more use of the channel. You get double the use of the channel. Right, so let's just... This is still loading with my uh, DMR number. Turn it up. Normally, I'd say a Pi 3 is quicker than this. Right, okay, so if you look now, we got some life on our hotspot, and it's showing information. It's a bit small to read, but it basically has my call sign, the slot I'm on, it says listening, and it has the IP address I'm on as well, which is 192.168.1.109. So, and if I put that into my browser, it will go to that, 192.168. Dot one dot one oh nine hit enter and it goes straight there um, and what I'll do I'll key up now we're just on talk group nine at the moment so we're not connected to a, a talk group yet this is a local talk group that's talking just between my radio and the hotspot you can see that it comes up and underneath here under local RF activity it's showing me and uh, it does show some GPS and uh, GPS is enabled on my 878, eight. I'll click it and see if it finds it. So um, I'll just put the last 15 minutes, but yeah, we're just doing this for fun. See what it finds. Hmm, not really. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. So, right. So now what you do is where I showed you the channel earlier um, and the different channels. So We've got all these different channels. Now, if you create one that's called Talk Group 91, for example, so I'll find that. Let's just find the channel, which is this. This is the settings. This is the actual settings I'm using right now. So 
you've got Talk Group 91. Now, this time I've selected up here Talk Group uh, 91 Worldwide. And so, again, you select it in that list. Okay. And still color code one, slot two, everything else. And this is the channel. So I'll go to that channel on my radio. Uh, now, you could, I'll show you two options. So, one option is you can go to the channel on your radio, or you can push the button beneath the PTT once then push the hash to change it to talk group from private ID to talk group ID and then what you could do you can push 9 1 and then you can just key the mic and what that will do it's done it already it will switch me and connect me to talk group 91 you see and then when there's activity you'll hear it the other way you can do it is you can just turn the the channels, if you've created several channels, now one of my channels here is 91. So if, well, if I put it on 9, you watch, it will switch back to 9. Yeah, see the way it switched back to 9? And you'll see the activity on the OLED screen. If I turn it to 91, there you are, it'll connect to talk group 91. And if you do this and you hear nothing, just remember your, oh yeah, the login username and password is pi lowercase when you log into configuration page, pi star, and then underneath rasp, raspberry, that's for all pi stars, sign in. It will ask for that sometimes when you're when you first go into the configuration page, it'll only ask it the first time or if you've reset it. So this is why the, if I'm scrolling down here to the DMR ID, so important, the call sign, because without this, nothing will work. So there you go. So put it back on the dashboard. Now, that's if you look here on the left, there's my frequencies, DMR net, DMR here. It's got my DMR ID enabled. So everything's showing up here. Um, now let's have a look. If we go to configuration and you want to update, there's an update button here. There's a power one here. If you click power, you can reboot it. Go back. Uh, if you hit expert, there's another update and another upgrade here. And that, there's a lot more to PyStar, but this is what we'll show you for now. So, okay. Well, 7.3, hope this helps you set up your Raspberry Pi 3B uh, with your MMDVM board. Now, the setup process is virtually the same, I would say, for the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Jumbo Spot. So, 7.3, please subscribe if you like my channel. All the best.